Hello, and this is the Master Stream. This is Dave Travels Through Time, and I'm with my friend Sadako, and we are waiting for Lee Anthony Davis to join this join our stream as well, talking about the master. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> so um, what were your earliest memories of the master? Yes, very good question. I would say it was well the, I saw his very first story. The, his first appearance in Doctor Who, the third Doctor story, The Terror of the Autons. Yeah. Oh, so you, you saw him um, the very first episode he was in, like you, the first time you saw him was his introduction. Yeah, it was back on PBS in 1998. Yeah, it, and they were airing the, the John, that John Pertree story, Terror of the Autons. Indeed. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good story, I, and, I, and I actually rewatched some um, clips of that story uh, yesterday. And you know, where he gets out of the horse box TARDIS, and you know, he has those hypnotic eyes, and you get to hear that he makes, very distinctive master theme by Dudley Simpson. He, he makes a very, very, very impressive entrance. Does he? Like striking entrance, like the moment you oh, see, yeah. you, you know, you're playing with a kind of titan of villains. Yes, and um. Yeah, I mean, I didn't see that until I was seventeen. Like, I it was in the um, it was when I first joined my first fan group because at that point there were hardly any uh, videos available. Uh, the TV movie had happened, um, so a lot of the videos had been deleted from stock. They they deleted them in the hope that they could boost the sales of the TV movie on video. It was yeah. it was it was ridiculous. I yeah. mean, you still found videos available that hadn't been kind of bought yet, but like most, yeah. the stock was deleted. Um, so I had to go to a fan group in order to get a lender copy of Terror of the Autons. Mm -hmm. And it was um it was shocking stuff actually. Even watching at 17, it was quite disturbing stuff. You had like the you know, the master's kind of the um the spray, you know, the, the you know, that plastic spray that just suffocates nearly suffocates Joe and the, the deadly chair. I mean, it was just yeah, it was quite a horrifying story, really. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I know that doll creeped the shit out of me. Oh, that was creepy. Yes, the doll. <laughs> yeah, I got complaints of by Mary Whitehouse, didn't it? That story. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Um, my first memory of, of um, I think it was actually probably the demons. Like I, I had um. The Demons was on. It was repeated in 1993. Mm -hmm. uh, the very same night I had Boys Brigade. So I managed to tape two episodes of The Demons. And so, like, you got to see the master in his kind of um, his vicar outfit. Um, and then it cut out just as um, just as the brigadier was driving to the um, the edge of the heat barrier. And, like, one of the... Uh, he kind of came across that, uh, that car that had kind of... That van that had just exploded because it, it hit the heat barrier. Yeah. And then I didn't see the master again until um the five doctors. Oh nice. Okay. Yeah. But I instantly knew that this is the same character and it's in the five doctors. I learned he's a time lord. He's not just a villain. He's just um he's actually like a time lord like the doctor is. Yeah. Oh, he just uh texted me back on Facebook. My internet is down at the moment, and I said, Darn, that bloody sucks. Oh, okay, all right. So it's just going to be the two of us then. Yeah, for right now. Yeah. Shame, really. I would have thought, um, you know, yeah, the three of us heard his input too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, it was um that was, and I do remember that when they repeated Planet of the Daleks over here, they uh, they did do a um at the end of each. At the beginning of each episode, they do these kind of five-minute little fan treats, these kind of short snippet videos. Of, um, there was one that would look at the history of the, the police box. Yeah. There was one that looked at the, um, you know, the auctions, the Doctor Who fan auctions. Cool. And it showed, like, those old scripts um, and, you know, Daleks and things like that. And there was another one that was about the... Uh, there, there was the missing episodes as well, that you know, how... Um, Mm -hmm. which Ian Levine was in. And <clears throat> they did this kind of novelty one where it was uh, basically, it's like this kind of, <laughs> <laughs> it was like a kind of a um, crime watch kind of program, only it was announcing the master. Have you seen this man? Uh -huh. And that was really good and actually showed 
some clips from Terry the Autons of him doing that kind of that nasty trick with the chair. And I'd never seen how there must have been that nasty before. Yeah. And I realized, though, that, you know, he isn't just a kind of a, um, a simple villain. He's pretty vicious. Yes, I agree. So, what, so what are your personal like favorite Delgado master stories? Well, the demons has to be one of them. I think um, I quite like uh, the Mind of Evil as well. I think that's oh, I love that one. Yes, with the Keller machine. Yes, indeed. Yes, and um, probably the Frontier in Space is a favorite as well. Like, I think oh it, yeah, that one's a very good one. Yes. I mean, the, the Delgado has some great moments in that. I love the bit where he's um, ferrying them to um, prison, and he's, yeah. uh, he's, he's he's planning that war, isn't he? So he kind of he decides, um, you know, decides for in-flight reading, he's going to read H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Oh, that was a classic scene. Yes, that was indeed. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> you know, it kind of if it's like you could have moments of humor with him, but you also had moments of genuine sinister. You know, um, intent, and it was like it was almost like the two worked together. It was like it was because he was quite a surreal character. Yeah, mm -hmm. he had a sort of charming uh, evilness, didn't he? Oh, indeed, yes, he was very charming. <laughs> yep. <coughs> yeah, and so um, the plan was originally they were going to do the um, the. I mean, I remember on um, one of um, someone else, another stream I was on, um, someone said that um, Gary, it was um, RetroDoc, said um, that he felt that sometimes in the in Series 8, well, series, Season 8, rather, not Series 8, mm -hmm. Season 8, yeah, uh, the Master was kind of in every story, and he, he was saying like it was, it was a bit of a shame that with Colony in Space, he arrives late into the story, and it's but the first scene where the... Uh, which is basically set on Gallifrey where the Time Lords are discussing the threat of the Doomsday weapon being stolen, kind of gives away the Master's going to be involved. And it's, you know, it was like, it was, I, I need to see Colony in Space, but that was, um, I've read the book though. And uh, that was the, um, that's kind of like, it was almost like, I think even Terrence Dick said that they felt that they almost overdid the Master that season. Yeah. Because uh, Terence Dix did say he feared that, in fact, the Master had become so prominent that season that he'd almost, his image almost overshadowed the Doctors. In the same way that, you know, he feels like maybe Rose overshadowed the Doctor in the RTD era. Yeah. So, um, so basically there was the, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool that they're their best friends, too, in real life, uh, Perchley and uh, Roger Delgado. Yeah, I mean, apparently, like um, Delgado, he was probably one of the loveliest blokes you could have met. Yeah, it's it's great that he could be so lovely and yet play evil so convincingly. Yes, yeah, exactly. And you just, you just seem to have for such fun playing that. You, you could tell he was getting a kick out of that part, couldn't you? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. It's the same. You know that his life was cut short. Just so soon you know it is indeed it's um uh speaking of which um that was uh that was after frontier and space wasn't it and that was it yeah. was like it very nearly was going to be the the final episode yeah uh, the following season but obviously it couldn't happen because um he died yeah hmm. yeah and the plan was originally something along the lines of I mean, I'm a bit hazy on the plot itself, but apparently the plan was that it was going to end with the master blowing himself up. Oh, and it, and it wasn't clear whether this was a um, an accident or or calamity, or whether the master deliberately sacrificed himself to save the doctor. Yeah, and that would have been um, quite an interesting kind of you know ambiguity. Um, yeah, there's that uh, that awesome fan audio that you know. Um deals with that as well the final the final end oh yeah oh, the, the final game um, final game, yeah yeah on youtube there's a um, what's the channel called again um seven something seven i'm gonna look this up because i was watching it earlier today studio seven or something just a minute oh yeah studio seven that's seven with an r yeah <laughs> um yeah they've done this um this huge uh six-part 
audio story um but it's like it's it's where it's i mean they they got a, they got the cast quite right they 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 perfectly they got the the right actor to play pertwee and the right actor to play the master yes. and um they basically it's basically a version of what might have that story might have been i mean it's a bit embellished it's not quite i, I doubt it would have been exactly like they painted i doubt they would have involved the villains that were involved but it basically is the plan of what might have been if the final game had happened if you know yeah. the final and um I, i'm up to episode four so far and um it's been pretty uh thrilling oh here's lee we can add him to the stream now awesome oh he's he's here oh yeah hello, here. Lee. hello lee hello lee hello how's it going i've got a problem you see i've, I've uh the you know i had a problem with it before this bloody laptop i'm using it bloody yeah. shit. Oh. Right, so ah. which, which uh laptop have you got Oh no, no! I bought it off the internet, you know, uh, to go uh, to go uh, with uh, getting on streams and stuff. But it All seems right. like I was on Microsoft. You heard it on Microsoft, yeah, Bill Gates. Yeah. Right. It was plugged into his bloody application, so I got yeah. one of my mates to pull it out and turn it back onto the other, so I could do Google and Chrome. Oh, I couldn't I do it on Microsoft. Oh, I that's see. what happened. When you buy it, it's on it's programmed on PD Microsoft for Bill Gates' bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you probably know about that, yeah. Uh, I I know that um I didn't know that I knew that Bill Gates and Apple were um <coughs> enemies. I didn't know that um mm -hmm. didn't know that they were clashing with Google as well. I didn't because that, that's probably so that the technologies aren't compatible because they don't want if you buy like a Microsoft computer. They don't want you buying Apple products to go with it, so they yeah, yeah, yeah. That's access what it boils down to yeah, it boils yeah. down to you can't buy their product all the time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, forgive the name, right? You'll notice that the name says Luka Luka Book. That's because Ooh. the internet was going dodgy on me, and I was trying to press my name in, and it. And so <laughs> I let everyone it. know it's Lee Anthony Davis, not that, yeah. not that astrology. <laughs> <coughs> oh, okay, I thought that was maybe um Venusian lullaby or something. Yeah, that's true. There you go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, we're um we were talking about when you just joined us, we were talking about the Delgado's master. Yeah. Oh yeah, Roger Delgado, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Masterful, masterful in action. He was he was not just a good character actor, he was brilliant yeah. he played here mm. in everything, you know. He was a sword and, fighter as well, by the way. He was brilliant and offensive. Yeah, he helped John Murphy in that scene in CW. Oh, yeah, the... Yeah, the... the yeah, was, was, was with pornography, you know, doing a bit of pornography with uh, John Murphy. You know, they do blocks, you know, rehearsals. So yeah. they do the timing right and everything. I see, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, think, I get the sense, like... That he did that, have, yeah. I mean... I, Looking back on his stuff, I feel like he had the poise of a, of a fencer, didn't he? Like he had the kind of the stature and poise of a good fencer. Yeah, yeah he had that Mediterranean look. Yes, <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he was always in those uh, sort of Arab films, you know, played the evil Arab in the Mommy Shroud, or, uh, you know, he was always yeah. playing those sort of Middle Eastern characters. Like he was in mm -hmm. Danger Man, he was in The Prisma, he's been in all those six kids like The Avengers and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, but he didn't want to do Doctor Who to, to begin with because he was worried about being stereotyped or type, typecast, as you call it. Yeah. That's why he wanted out. But unfortunately, he passed away. Well, he did pass away. He went before his time, a stupid taxi driver, driving yeah. out, you know, bleeding round, bleeding mountains in Portugal, I think it was. I don't know where it was. Dangerous mountains, going around corners, and then obviously went over. You know, because the taxi driver was trying to hurry to get him to his next thing. He, you know, because Roger didn't like uh, swimming. He didn't like it. He was scared, but no. he did it because he was brave. Yeah. You know, yeah. He didn't get involved in any stunt, so they had to yeah, have a double. Like with John Pertwee, had a double for him as well. There was a um, there was a bit in um, the Myth Makers where they talked about the end of the Sea Devils, where um, they've broken out of the yeah. Sea Devil fort just before it explodes, and um, yeah. and I think someone was kind of um, needling Delgado about the fact that he was um, quite shaky. And like John yeah. Pertwee got very protective and said, "Look, look, he's got a phobia of of water. He's been brave yeah. enough to come out here. Okay, leave him alone, kind of thing." And I thought, 
and it's like and it's strange you wouldn't think it because like he see you know but he, he did have those phobias which is a shame can i just give you a quick story about somebody else who had a phobia go for it elizabeth sladen elizabeth sladen yeah she was yeah. scared stiff of spiders Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you know, she did Planet of the uh, Spiders and John Pertwee's Final Adventure. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. John, John himself, got a little spider, you know, a bit of time to, to sort of coax her into it. She was right. scared, scared stiff. So he gave her a little spider to, to look at, and then he said, might not touch it, you know, because she she she, she would have frozen Yeah, uh, when it was in the field. So they had to coax her in. She was scared stiff. She really was. She was frightened <laughs> terribly. Right. Had a big phobia about spiders. So when she had that spider on her back, she must have uh, sort of <laughs> thrown it. Yeah. <laughs> but up to that, she, uh, they helped her along. They helped her along. Barry Letts yeah. and Terence Dix, because it was like a family. You know, even though Elizabeth Sladen came in late, John Pert was yeah. on his way out. Uh, yeah. Terence Dix yeah. was going to stay on. Harry Letts was going to help uh, bring in the showrunner, Philip Kinchcliffe, who stayed with him. He stayed with Philip. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. He stayed with Philip yeah. into Robot. So yeah. uh, Philip followed him around the set mm. so, he, so, he could get, so he could get an idea of how Harry Letts did it so he could sort of smooth him into it. So yeah. Philip went, uh, went with him all the way, even on the first episode. He saw the influences with uh, Robot, you know, those toy tanks, you know, it looked unconvincing. Yeah. You know, they yeah. had that uh, toy tank rolling up. You could tell it wasn't, it wasn't real. It looked like uh, something out of a yeah. matchbox. Yeah, I have to admit, when I was uh, 11, I thought it was meant to be a remote control toy tank that just happened to fire real bullets. <laughs> but, like, yeah. no, it was meant to be a real tank. They used TSL, the uh, overlay, the blue overlay, super overlay, for the screen yeah. and everything. It didn't yeah. work for that. It didn't work because of the robot. And it, when it grew bigger, you saw that orange sort of uh, thing. It, it sort of reflected badly onto the robot, so it looked really bad. But it was it looked yeah. badly imitated. It looked terrible when it was starting to get bigger and bigger, and you saw this orange glow coming from it. Yeah, so that was the screen behind it causing it because of the color. And it was yeah. a new experiment they were trying out in Doctor Who as well. I'd never mm -hmm. been tried before. Harry Letts introduced it. Yeah. Um, Matthew Pounders just said... Um, Sorry, so, I have to apologise. I went on a bit. No, no, that's fine. Right. Right. Those anecdotes are always um, useful. They're always, it's always good to... They, you know. Um, um, Sladen says she didn't appreciate John's help with Sydney the Spider. <laughs> that's what Matthew Pounders said. He also said, uh, I've just seen Delgado in Terror of the Tongs, which is not for the woke crowd. Yeah. I need to see more of uh, Delgado's. Yeah. I need to see more. Of, I need to see more Delgado's old um, other films because I've I've only ever seen him in his Doctor Who stuff. Yeah, same here. Yeah. He's done a lot of stuff. I've seen everything he's done from the fifties yeah. to sixties. Uh, his uh, wife, uh, Yasmin, is it Yasmin Delgado? Yes, that's the one. The voice of the Spider, the Queen Spider. Yes, oh. Oh. that's true. Yeah, I didn't know that. No, but yeah, she's a good voice actor. Yeah, she did yeah. that as well. You know, so she she was sort of brought in because uh, it was John's final finale. They even gave John everything he wanted to do, like James Bond, like fly by helicopters and uh, yeah. hovercraft and that awful looking bloody what was it? Wombie. The Who, the Who mobile. <laughs> yeah, the Who mobile. I mean, John uh, built up himself, but he tried to get it on the road. It's classed as a float, isn't it? Really, you think about yeah. it. But it's, it's yeah. not, it's not, it's not, I wouldn't want to be behind that if he's driving. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm grateful I don't drive, so <laughs> I wouldn't come. Yeah. Um, actually, I drive. I drive actually, but I drive a mad. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, sorry, go on, getting carried away. Well, actually, um, we were, um, we were wondering, like, um, your um, earliest memories of the master. Because um, we we've done ours like, like um, yeah. Oh, it would be Roger Delgado. Oh, was, did Roger you actually? Delgado yeah. would have been one that I would have uh, remembered definitely. So you, so you, so you for saw his, uh, for his uh, presence, uh, yeah. for the way he delivered those lines, the yeah. way he uh, moved, he just had that sort of uh, look that you know mm. this guy you do not mess with. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not into your eyes. You know what he's saying? Because he, because the master is a pronounced hypnotist, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and he's and when you saw the new adventures, you know, with Doctor Who went, Doctor Who went along, uh, there was less evidence of it, didn't they? They put in a bit of reference about his maybe Tennant made a reference about his a master hypnotist or but it didn't really uh, yeah. dwell on that a lot. But that's what yeah. he was. He was uh, uh, I mean they didn't even tell you if he's his brother or not, you know, the doctor's brother. You know, yeah. uh, I think Terence Dix was coming up with an idea with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, my early recollection has got to be, yeah, Robert Delgado. Uh, the first adventure I saw him in was this thing with a bloody chair. <laughs> oh, the, um, <laughs> uh, the terror of the year. Yeah, the, um, he sat in that chair there and just slipped away. <laughs> I like the way he tells the guy, you know, he demands it, he says, sit down yes exactly <laughs> like <that. laughs> Powerful, controlled and i like the bit where he comes out of the, you know in the uh was it he's first yeah terry the orton's at the beginning he comes out of this hall spot which was the tardis obviously and he yeah. says and the guy says i'm uh i'm morelli nationally and he says i am the master universal yeah. <laughs> universally so <laughs> it was a good one yeah so yeah. you were so you saw the uh, the the stuff as it aired when it first aired? Uh, no, <laughs> oh. no. I can, I'll tell you my first uh, live. Uh, well, when it went out live, I'd have to be honest. It would be uh, towards Tom, uh, not Tom Baker, John Pertwee's final ending towards the right. end of the season. The first one I caught was I think it was the Time Warrior in 1973. Yeah. I was about. Yeah. I was really young. I didn't understand what was going on. Uh, and I saw something flash a light in John Pertwee's face. It was actually in Santorin. You remember with that thing he's got, that gun, that yeah. weapon? And he says, yeah. you want my answer, Doctor? And here it is. <laughs> yes. Like that, it? So that's, a, yeah. that's my earliest recollection of Doctor Who. But I must admit, I have, I have actually seen Doctor Who before that. It was in Patrick Troughton. I was watching it from my brand. I didn't know what was going on. All I remember <laughs> was coming out of reading Quarry. They're coming yeah. out of a bleeding quarry, and I think it was the pro bombs. I'm not too sure. It was this bleeding quarry, you know, the, the old usual yeah. quarry trick where they they try and yeah. sort of muscle it in because they can't get enough outside shots. So they always go back to the quarry, don't they? And every inch, even the Tom Baker ones with uh, a hand of fear, they came out in a quarry, you know, because it saves money and time, doesn't it, <laughs> to, to yeah. shoot it. So anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I remember that one. It's in black and white. The Tardis was there, and then up came Patrick Brown and. Uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Zoe Padbury, is it? Yeah, and when, uh, when, Wendy Padbury. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. I think I was either. Um, that would have been either the Crotons or um, or the Dominators. Yeah, the Crotons, definitely the Crotons. Yeah. yeah. I I I once referred to them as the Crouton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> That's good. I think the writers referred to it as the Croutons because it was like. <laughs> They were a terrible monster, weren't they? Badly yeah. designed. You could hardly stand up. I mean, you could blow them over with your breath. Yeah. I mean, just imagine, you might, the worst monster I ever saw was in Peter Davidson's, uh, was it that thing called the Melka? What a load of rubbish that was. That was actually uh, Rentadolce. You know, the two guys in the pantomime horse? Yeah. That was yeah. them in that. <laughs> yeah, oh, true. Uh, Where's the deep? That's... That's that's the monster that always makes so Jody's ear look good. It, it couldn't keep it steady with balance. I think they had all sorts of things inside it. And if they sort of went one way, the other one would go the other way. So that's why it wobbled. Yeah. I mean, how could you not get away from that? How could you not get away from that? You could walk away from that. And they were standing there terrified. Oh, no. It's going to kill us. I love, I love Davidson's first line when seeing it. Like, he goes, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all he has to say. Yeah. Like, you know, just says it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know the budget for the BBC, they didn't get a lot of money, let's face it. I mean, they had America and stuff. Highly stopping to, to stuff. And I can't understand why they were being unfair with Doc 2. Doc 2 deserved a lot more money into the oh, program. Yeah. It Thank deserved you. a lot because the actors, as far as I'm concerned, were better than the Hollywood actors doing their stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Tom Baker, John Perkins. Patrick Trout, William Hartnell, uh, Peter Davidson. Uh, I don't know about Colin Baker. He didn't really succeed. As far as I'm concerned, this is another true story. I'll tell you quickly. Colin Baker, okay. 
Uh, according to uh, Edward Seward, you know, the writer, he direct editor. Edward Seward. Uh, there was, there was, there was, there was, there was a bit of a problem between him and JNT. Uh, JNT yeah. was having a party for one of his friends, right? Having a wedding. Yeah. And Colin Baker was invited, right? This is after he did the uh, the Maximus yeah. character. In, uh, I couldn't think of yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. John, this too, John uh, Nathan Turner says, you're going to have to calm it down a bit, uh, Colin, uh, with Maximus, yeah. because this is not the uh, Maximus show. This is Doctor Who. <laughs> you're yeah. not the centre of attention here. But he was really giving it all, wasn't he? Remember that? But anyway, he went to the party. And he made everybody laugh. He was the soul of the party. You know, he was having one of his best days of telling jokes and getting on with it. And John Nathan yeah. Turner picked him because of that. Because of that. Yeah. Not because of what he could do in the screen test. And I think that might have been the reason why there was a lot of resentment. I really do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eric Gerard was not happy. About no. He says, why do you give? Why do you give someone that smiles at you, John? Yeah. Mm. That's what it was. It was because John had a, was had a, was renowned for doing things like this, you know. Oh, yeah. But even well, yeah, it's another thing that he would do. You know, you know these uh, fan bases that he used to go on like open air and stuff on television, uh, mm. and they you know Doctor Who Appreciation Society he used to give them presidents and all these script yeah. writers, including Eric yeah. Bell, were waiting outside the door waiting for him to come and see them and say, "Right, yeah. we've got the script." But he had, they had to wait before he, you know, because he wanted to be loved. He wanted to be yeah. loved. He loved. And that was yeah. a bad thing because he forgot the reason yeah. why you're doing it. He started off with good intentions, with good direction for the program. I mean, he brought in yeah. some good music. Right? Uh, that changed the sort of theme to it. So he yeah. knew it was going in a different direction. But unfortunately, uh, he fell out with Tom Baker. Well, Tom Baker fell out with him, simple as that. Because he did yeah. have these stupid little signals that he wanted him to wear <laughs> on his fingers. No, the, yeah. Yeah. I know the bleeding doctor. I can do the bleeding doctor. I am the bloody doctor. I know how the doctors don't tell me how the doctor should be. I am the doctor. They all know me. And JMT and uh, a few others, he just didn't get on with it. And I think Tom Baker at that time had enough anyway. I think yeah. he wanted. I think he wanted to go, and he realised he had to go because he wanted to get other parts. And unfortunately, it took him a year to get a part, which was the Hound of the Baskervilles in 1982. Yeah. yeah. So there you have it. So uh, stereotyping can be a bad thing. Peter Davison uh, once quoted Patrick Brown and say, "Do three years and get out." Yeah. And that's yeah. what Peter Davison did because he met him in a car park, Patrick Brown, when he was doing the uh, that, uh, anniversary, the 20th anniversary. Yeah, Patrick, Patrick says, uh, Peter, uh, how many years have you done in Doctor Who? He says, and he's oh, coming up to me fourth, uh, third season. I think it is. He says, This is the time to get out because if you stay any longer, you'll end up uh, being passed over, you know, yeah. you won't get mm -hmm. part that you want because they'll stereotype you. Don't want to be doctor, known as Doctor Who, do you? You want to be known as an actor, that's what yeah. you do it for, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's what he took advice from uh, Patrick Chan, and he and he did it. He just did three years and got out. But unfortunately, the program was on its ass by then. Yeah, it was. So, yeah. yeah, because uh, I really, I really did. It's a, it's amazing, isn't it? Peter Davison didn't get a bloody good story until the last adventure called the Case of Mandazani. Yeah. All the rest of them were bloody useless. The writing yeah. wasn't. You know, yeah. uh, but in that one, you could feel for Peter Davidson is actually going to leave. What a shame. You know, only if you could. And another thing is Perry, uh, played by Nicola Bryant. She yeah. should have been uh, sort of a, 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 I reckon they should have developed those characters together. They would have yeah. worked up. I thought she worked better with Peter Davidson than she did with Colin Baker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Anyway, I've said you not. Yeah. It's not for you. <laughs> well, no, I, I agree. I think like it did go to a bit. I just think like Jane T should have just done two or three scenes at most and just gone. And it's yeah. same with, same with uh, Eric Sayward. I think they both stayed too long on the show, and the yeah. show suffered for it. And um, like in, in terms of Davison, I thought I think the only apart from Case of Andrzejewski, his only good ones were Earthshock, Enlightenment. I thought was good, and the Five Doctors. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought the Five Doctors were very good. You're right there. You got it spot on. Five Doctors are good because it's something to give back to the fans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. remember, they did Longley. Do you remember Longley? They did this big exhibition. You know, a big thing for all the fans. And they went down there, and there was miles and miles of queues of people trying to get in. They couldn't get in. Right. So yeah. the Peter Davidson 
took it upon yeah. himself to go out and meet these fans that couldn't get in down the yeah. queues. He went down mm -hmm. and personally had a chat with them. You know, yeah. that was nice of him to do that because none of the others did. He did it. And then he, he invited Turlow and Mark Stickson to come with him and the other cast, and they all joined him. And they all went down the line because they knew they weren't going to get in because JNT never anticipated for a minute that it would be that big. Yeah. You know, I forgot yeah. where it was. I don't know if it's in, in Hertfordshire somewhere, but it was a big day. It was on Easter 1983. Yeah. Like, I, I wasn't there at the time. I um, uh, I only became a fan after the show ended. But, I mean, I, I, I've, I've heard of Longleat. It is kind of the stuff of legend, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what. I was really glad when they brought it back. Uh, oh. And I, I couldn't believe my amazement when Christopher yeah. Eccleston kicked those doors in. I thought, here we go. We've got Noel yeah. Gallagher in their face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, a disaster oh, says, uh, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> I like the bit where he says to the Dalek, that his face is timing like, uh, like this. He says, I made it happen. I done it. I made it happen. You know, yeah, that sort of thing. Really. That was yeah, brilliant. Was... I like the really close-up. It's fantastic how they got the yeah. emotion. Yeah. There was a good storyline there. Uh, what's his name? Spearman, was it? I can't remember who wrote that. It's never Rob, wrote Rob, Rob Shearman. Rob Shearman. Rob Shearman, yeah. brilliant writer. Yeah. I can't understand why they never used him again. He wrote yeah. very good a Dalek story. That was one of the best Dalek stories since the classic, since uh, Genesis yep. of the yeah. Dalek. Yeah. Because I, when you watch the Sylvester one, they were convoluted. You know, you knew what was happening. It's the same old crap. Dalek would lose. The Doctor would win. And that would right. be yeah. it. You know, but mm. this one it had a sort of a fifty-fifty situation where the Dalek had no meaning anymore to go on killing, yeah. and the Doctor yeah. had no plans to go to, so his meaning had been lost. So they were both lost, and they were both yeah. uh, in the same situation. You know, one needs the other. Yeah, mm. and that was a good way to do a story. It had emotion. It was very powerful, and the oh. message was clear to everybody what it, what it meant to the viewer. It was yeah. a very good story, and they yeah. never came close to doing anything as good as that. And that's what I say: yeah. you don't have a good writer, you lose you lose the audience because the oh. writer is the king. Yeah, I agree. Totally. Definitely. Without the dialogue, without the good dialogue, without the witty dialogue, without you know, to what to 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 bring the audience in to to let them know what's going on. Like uh, yeah. Elizabeth Slater was brilliant at this. She used yeah. to uh, talk to the audience. You know, like Siliquine, you know? Oh, yeah. The audience, what's going on. Because obviously she knows what's going on. She's read the script. But yeah. the audience <laughs> doesn't know what's going on. So she has yeah. to tell the audience. The doctor tells her, and she tells the audience by talking it out loud, you know, at a certain angle she stands or whatever. But she's actually addressing the audience what's going on. That was brilliant. Kate Manning was the same. She used to do that as well. Doctor, what do you do with this? You know, what's yeah. this for, mm. Doctor? So it, it helps the audience engage. You know, yeah. that's why these characters were loved by people. They'll never be forgot. Uh, some of the uh, characters they developed, I think they just brought them in just to sort of shoehorn them in. But yeah. now, uh, I don't know where Dot is going. I mean, I don't want to. I want to stay tight lips on this because it's a controversial. It's a. It's a bit of a sore font to talk about now uh, yeah. because of the way politics has gone. I don't agree with politics. I know politics has been in there. I don't agree with it. I don't think it's yeah. entertaining. Every time I see a bloody politician on the bloody television, I turn him off. I yeah, don't yeah. want to be lectured. Uh -oh. so that's what it's a politics show. Why don't they call it the BBC Doctor Who politics show? Because that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to go down that route, as you know, because it's uh, it's a nest of writers. Because a lot of yeah. people are coming after me if I said the wrong word or the wrong thing. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I've got a lot of members to consider. There are a lot of Jody yeah. Whistler fans in my group. I've got to be careful. Yeah. I already had trouble yesterday on one of my pages. I put a Jody Whittaker poster on. I put it right. on. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. and one of them came up to me and said, I'm not coming to this page anymore. I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a feedback. I'm not a bloody volunteer act. You know, I've got, I'll tell you the worst one I had trouble with was when I first started off. Uh, I had two groups, the official Dot Two group is what I've got now. And I've got a uh, Dot Two group. I paid to a good friend of mine called Jeffrey Brown. 
he's got that yeah. through. I started that one. I gave it to him. I couldn't do too many. Uh, yeah. So I let him have that. He's been well with that one. Uh, yeah. And I have this official got two group. And this was about one of the members joining. I, a, a friend of mine uh, invited this uh, this young lady on. And she liked yeah. Goldie Whittaker. Now, the yeah. problem was, she liked Goldie Whittaker and she put a poster on there. And I had okay. no choice but to back her up. And unfortunately, it exploded. Yeah, it right. exploded. It caused minutes. I had to back her up because they're attacking yeah. her. Yeah. Uh, I said, no. Uh, and, they, and I lost 20 people that day. 20 people. But, it's, um, but, but, but my situation's healthier now. I mean, I'm coming close to about 400 members on that. So it's yeah, been I mean, all right. But that was my worst moment because I had to arbitrate between everybody. It started off with one, then another one jumped in, and another one. As soon as I laid in, so that guy says, leave it out, or chop you off. They all yeah. jumped on me and attacked me. He says, oh, you're unfair. You're, only, you're, you're biased. You don't like it. He says, nothing to do with that. I says, why are you picking on that? It's only a bloody poster, yeah. for God's sake. Why are you getting emotional over a bloody product? Yeah. And that, I mean, that's the thing. I'm not a fan of Dodie, but I wouldn't, I don't see the need to, for people to react that badly to just the image of her. Yeah. No, oh, hi, no hi, Charlotte. I, blame, I blame the BBC. The yeah, BBC yeah. has to blame for this catastrophe. They've done it deliberately. Yeah. Because we know the programme under Peter Capaldi, it wasn't Capaldi's fault that the programme was like, it was Bloody Moffat and his yeah. cohort, because he opened yeah. the bloody door yeah. to these people in the first place. Yeah. He's got that little circle. Chibnall, uh, Davis, they're all the same. Davis couldn't get away with it because the BBC did not have that. Uh, diversity policy at that time in 2005, but he tried to put a little few snippets in he could get away with. Uh, yeah. But uh, Stephen Moffat is when it all changed because he opened yeah. the bloody door. It was him. Yeah. He's waving the bloody banner for God's sake. Uh, yeah. So that's how we got this situation now. Because you remember, it was deliberate. Moffat was a moody bastard, wasn't he? He was a moody he was. bastard. He didn't like his yeah. stuff. He'd get funny with you. He wouldn't talk to anybody and he'd deliberately make the story crack. So you get even more pissed off. I mean, here's an example. He does two stories like back to back. Like he gives you a real good story, and then in the uh, finale, it's crap. Anti climax. Yeah. Like the Cyberman yeah. story, you know, the uh, last one he ever did before the Christmas special, before he finished. It yeah. gave you a fantastic start, a big build up with Bill yeah. turned into a Cyberman. And what's he do yeah. with it? He throws it in a dustbin and wastes it. It was just yeah. almost as if he just thought, right, now I'm going to really piss them off. Well, exactly. Well, me the word. Why do that, Moffat? Why yeah. do that? But he did. He did do it. He wrote that bloody story deliberately to piss people off because he's had enough to do it now. You know, because if you don't like it my way, he was an ego pissed. There's no question about it. He had a bloody ego the size of Mount Everest, like they all have in his little story. Because uh, well, think... the writers, writers get a bit of power. You know? Yeah, yeah. So you have this problem. It's like actors; they get hit between their teeth. They've got a bit of power, yeah. and they start using it, and then they start, you know, like pushing the boundaries how far they will dare go until somebody yeah. stops them, and they get yeah. powerful. And that's what writers are because I don't know if you heard of a guy called Hobbard. Have you heard Who? of a guy called uh, L. J. Hobbard? Joe A. Hobbard, I think his name is. He oh, was no. a guy that created Scientology. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. He was a writer. Yes. Right. He was so, the one. So, the reason why they wanted to turn it into a religion is because they didn't have to pay tax on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's a religion, but we all know it's a cult. Oh, it is. But I won't go down that, I won't go down that route, otherwise I'll have some nasty letters coming to me. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, so it, it, it was a problem with Moffitt. Moffitt you know, he did some good stories, but under yeah. uh, the BBC's gaze, it was sort of reeled in. He couldn't, like, go too far with what he wanted to yeah. do with it. So mm -hmm. eventually, he got a bit of power, and his mates were all in position, uh, you yeah. know, uh, all his friends. Uh, so when he left, he didn't leave. He didn't leave, really, did he? He went, uh, the BBC moved him on to doing Sherlock Holmes or what that Dracula monstrosity he did, you know? Uh, you know, it's a bit of, uh, yeah. of left-wing politics there, thrown mm -hmm. in, you know. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway, getting back to the point, getting back to the point before I completely lose my head. Uh, he, he gave you a good story, but then he always 
followed it up with a complete load of utter, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was terrible because it was a disappointment for everybody. You were expecting a great finale, a great ending for it. And it was terrible. I mean, what was the point of those bleeding kids? They didn't have any reason to be there. You know, the master the, um, and Missy, you mean that, why yeah. the hell did he have them shooting each other? What's the point of that? He didn't even learn anything from it. <laughs> no. That was mocking for you. So yeah. anyway, uh, we went into so this complete fiasco with Once Upon a Time. Was it Twice Upon a Time? With, Twice Upon uh, a Time, yeah. yeah David Bradley. Actor, uh, yeah, that's yeah. him. Uh, he played him. Uh, it was, I suppose in a way it wasn't his fault. It's an actor. He does what he's paid to do. But yeah. the projection of it was terrible. That's a load of bollocks. William Martin was never like that. No. No. He was never like that as a character or as a person. No. I'm sure you. Yeah. If you ever seen William Hartnell had a problem, right? He had a drink he obviously drank. That's yeah. with everybody. Yeah. Oliver Reed drunk, Ricky Harris drunk. Because that kid yeah. is a stressful name, isn't it? Because of the popularity yeah. of the there's no rest. Like I mean, look at the Beatles. I want them to be the Beatles. Look at them, they couldn't go anywhere without anyone bothering them. Yeah, you know what I mean? In the end yeah. it paid the price of John Lennon. You know? at the end of the day, popularity is its own evil. Yeah. And that's well, why that I don't want nothing to do with popularity. I prefer to be liked, but not popular. Yeah. That's like, um, I think that's what went wrong with Moffat. I feel like, um, he, like he, he had like this, like he was, he was a fan, but he was embarrassed about being a fan. And once he became the showrunner, like all the the limelight was on him, and that's when he started to go neurotic. I think, mm -hmm. and you could see, it. yeah, he got a bit, got a bit egotistic. He just say he got the yeah. power. Uh, I don't yeah. know what you thought about Matt Smith. I mean, what did you think of him, gentlemen? Did you like? I, did you think the good choice? I liked him. I thought he was good. You did. Um, I liked him. I um, in fact, I um, I went to a convention uh, with Wendy Padbury, and she'd been Matt Smith's agent, and this was before Matt Smith was. He'd, he'd been announced, but we hadn't seen the stories yet. This was 2009. Like David Tennant was still doing his um specials, and she said no, he's going to be great. Sadako, can I just say this? She was also Paul McCann's agent, wasn't she? Wendy oh. Padbury. Oh, was she? Yeah, I, yeah. I think Jennifer, oh, no. she got the job and got to the movie. <laughs> oh, all right. Because <laughs> I, I didn't know she was an agent anymore. I didn't realize she was an agent. She's gone from actress to agent. It's amazing, isn't it? How Doctor Who connections connect. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't um, wasn't Janet Fielding his agent as well, like Paul McGann's agent? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And yeah. she she yeah, put yeah. she she was really sour at the show, and she just tried to put him off it kind of thing. Did you know? Did you know? Sylvester McCoy had to take a screen test because mm -hmm. Jonathan Young, yeah. the drama, yeah. didn't yeah. trust JMT's judgment. In no, I that, yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. Did you know that Janet Fielding was his screen test? Yeah, yeah, remember, yeah. with them, yeah. It's on the uh, Dragonfire yeah, Records. Yeah. yeah. Janet oh, Fielding God. was off. She played Margaret Thatcher, and he had to yeah. sort of uh, do the improvisation yeah. and the exposition that goes with it, you know. Uh, yeah. It was pretty good, but the problem was the two people who put him off against were crap anyway. You know, so yeah. how would you know? I know he eventually <laughs> matured into the part. And oh, I, yeah. yeah. That he could have been a very good doctor. I really do. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, it, I mean, if you say about three years, I'd say he was there till 1996 officially. Yeah. Before, because he was in the movie at the beginning. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, the continuity. Yeah. Exactly. So he was in there. He's yeah. the longest ever doctor. I know it sounds tough to say it, but he was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, because um, he was there from 1987 to 1996. Yeah. Because what yeah. happened in between? Nothing. Well, obviously, yeah. Mr. McCoy had about eight more, six, seven more, or six more years, six more years of adventures we don't know about that could have come out yeah. on audio. You know? Yeah. yeah. Pretty sure. Mm -hmm. And did you know, you probably do know this, but Sophie Audrey, uh, who I spoke to a couple of weeks ago, funny enough, uh, I was on this live, like, like I'm, I'm asking the questions. We had a good chat and everything. It was, it was really dead good, you know. Uh, so she was, uh, her character, Ace, was yeah. actually uh, meant to be going to Gallifrey, you know. Yeah. They had a mm -hmm. very, uh, to, like Leela. Leela, remember Leela? Lewis oh, Jameson. Yeah. Oh, I remember She Leela. stayed in Gallifrey. What, what, 
keep yeah. calm at a time and all that. You know? yeah. So yeah. It was, they didn't really elaborate on their characters beyond that point when they left. No. 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 You never heard of the name. <coughs> the only, um, there was a Gallifrey audio series that. Um... Would she have been part of the Time War, Leela? Would she live there? She stayed on, uh, she married or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. She would, oh, have been. would have been a Time War. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, and you know what made me laugh about Russell T Davis? I think he badly handled it. But not Russell T Davis leading uh, Moffat again with the Time War. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he should have done it. I think it's no. terrible because it didn't explain anything. Where does John no. Hurt come into it? I know John Hurt had to be shoehorned in because yeah. Chris Eccleston had the people for the BBC. We know that. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense the way he did it. It just did yeah. it. I just think they just crammed it all in, you know, for the fans, you know. Yeah. I, should, I would have wanted Terence Stick to write something like that. Hmm. Yeah. Or Spearman or that, you know, the wanted Dr. Darling. People like them, you know, with credible uh, ability. I mean, the guy, uh, what's his name, Terence, even though the Target book, for God's sake, along with a few other people. So that yeah. just shows you he's a creative genius. Yeah. <coughs> Because it was, his adventures, I think, was the war games, wasn't it? He wrote the war games. He, he was on yeah, yeah. script in the 60s and uh, early 70s. Yeah. And Barry Letts, uh, I believe, was a, a writer as well, but he had to, because he used pseudonyms, you know, different names. So, because they, they were weren't so allowed to, yeah, because yeah. of the uh, contacts and stuff, you know, because he yeah. can't get. Polly Parker used to use that as well, you know, like he used to use a different name when he wrote something, so they didn't know it yeah. did. Yeah, like uh, the bland pseudonym. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, they use a different name. Like right? uh, uh, Terence Dix didn't want his name on that. I think that was between Don Halton, uh, Don Halton. Uh, I think yeah. they did. Uh, didn't like. The, I think it might have been uh, Robert Holt. <laughs> yeah. You know, Robert Holt go over the line. Yeah, he actually crossed the line to really frighten everybody. I mean, he'd have yeah. eyes coming out of his pocket yeah. and stop you from get away with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he couldn't. Uh, Philip Benchcliffe had to sort of draw him back <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of her. There was a, a rock violer called Mary in the house. Yeah, yeah, we, we know about that. Yeah, I think it's oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I'll tell you something, right? She was the reason why Dr. Uh, the, the BBC mob, yeah, did what she wanted, they cowered into yeah. her because she thought what? she had power. She, she got on my nerves, really. She, if you, she endorsed the program. Like, you remember the goodies? No. Nope. Comedy with three Sadie, uh, Bill Oddy, and uh, Tim Brooke Taylor and Graham Oh, the goodies. Yeah, I remember the goodies. Yeah. Yeah, the goodies. Yeah. yeah. She said the goodies are a, a wholesome program. I, I, I yeah. recommend. That's what she said. The goodies found yeah. out what she said. She said, right, this is really making shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she endorses it, right? She endorses it. Nobody wants the bloody thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and a record like Sex Pistols, everyone goes out and buys it because it's bad. If it, yeah. you know, it probably buys yeah. it, you know, because controversially, that's what gets results. You know? Yeah, like I think with the goodies, wasn't it like across the road from a different platform? Yeah, so I'm going to try and get back to you after Doctor Who and the Master. <laughs> We've been oh, okay. going in different places and different directions. <laughs> 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 No, I was going to say the goodies thing. I think um, Bill Oddy said that um, when he found that out, he decided, right, we're going to have to try and provoke her because, mm -hmm. like, we want to convince her this is a naughty program. So they did several sketches. They did one that involved um, brutal police and um, one involving us S and M kind of uh, people with whips kind of thing, and it didn't get a complaint. And then finally, they just did this sketch where. Um, where someone was in his underpants, Sorry, and he had this, <laughs> yeah, and he had this um this carrot design on his crotch, and that got the complaints. And he's like, finally, finally, yeah. she. But she she what? did, didn't she? She she caused um her main reaction was to the deadly assassin, wasn't it? That's yeah, what the she problem with her, right? the problem with her, she lived in a different world. She lived in a world where it's got to be safe, and children should not be uh, <laughs> like, exposed to all the dangers of the world. But you don't do yeah. things like that. Put molly cobble them and put blankets around them and shield them for that. They've got to look, they've got to see the reality for what it is. Yeah. You know? 
Well, what are mm. you? Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mary Whitehouse, she came from the bloody 1940s where Germany was at war with us and stuff. That's how she yeah. took her experiences. Well, she she even mean, had to go like Michael Winner. Remember Michael Winner did all death and everything? Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, the wish. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, right now, he's saying he's living in violence and it's all for money and stuff, and it's very bad on the children's minds. I'm thinking, cobblers, we've got Texas Chainsaw Massacre being shown and everything. These, fil these films didn't hurt anybody. Yeah. It just uh, sort of uh, made you jump back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, why was she so powerful? I mean, why, why did the BBC give in to her? That's what I don't understand. Well, because she was right, uh, she's writing letters. Uh, you could say she yeah. was a sort of uh, getting political support as well. It's the politics that she would bring it into it. All she was was a silly old woman in a silly act and a silly sort yeah. of uh, conservative sort of uh, look. Uh, she's one of yeah. these maggots, niggers. She also was a bleeding housewife. She watched television one day. She was disgusted. She even says that BBC are bringing porn onto television. I've right. For it for I've never found it. What's the fault of a woman made her leg, a bare ankle? That's what she probably meant. Probably, yeah. <laughs> but like, I. I because that's the thing. When I um when I grew up as a fan, she was interviewed on a uh, more than thirty years in the TARDIS, where she she uh, says the reason, yeah. she, the, like she complained about the scene where um the Doctor's drowning in the Matrix, and the, about the cliffhanger, yeah. the fact that like for a whole week you didn't know if the Doctor was going to escape. And I actually think was um I I didn't know how powerful she was, so I just thought she was interviewed because she just had an opinion on the show. But then she was, mm -hmm. very, she was very powerful in in the sense of uh, having a political sort of platform because a yeah. lot of people, a lot of middle aged people, followed her. You know, they were all thinking oh. that uh, their children were under threat by media and stuff. They're going to be brainwashed. They're going to be zombies. They're going to go out killing people. All because of these films. She's totally got it wrong because at the end of the day, she comes from a different bloody era. You know. Yeah. It's like me I mean, telling you how to sock eggs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. You know, I mean, so uh, the problem was the BBC gave her a little <clears throat> bit of role and then eventually she got too much of it and the BBC was sort of hands tied, you know, uh, every time she went into... Because the, the newspapers cottoned on to her and they gave her a column, you know, so that helped her as oh. well. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I get it now. Oh, yeah. The media sort of uh, helped her out there because I think they were trying to sort of manipulate how television should be. We all know how the media works anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We've got Rupert Murdoch with Son James running it. Would you expect? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I think I found a bug. No. It's all right. It's just before. Okay. <laughs> so, um, do you remember the Deadly Assassin? Yeah, I remember it. So, I'll tell you the bit I remember the one you were talking about, that one you were talking about, the uh, one where Tom Baker's head goes under the water. It didn't give me yeah. any bloody nightmares. I thought, bloody yeah. hell, how far can Tom hold his breath for more than a minute? I wonder. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a classic it story. <clears throat> it didn't me. Yeah, it was a classic story because it was based on the Manchurian candidate. Yes, it was. Yeah. It was, yeah. Because uh, you notice uh, Billy Hinchcliffe would rip off a few programs from the past. Well, Doctor Who was always ripping off, let's face it, the uh, oh. Planet of Evil was based on the Tempest. Shakespeare. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so uh, there was a lot of things going on there. But they've all been copied. I mean, even the Pain of Morbius came from Frankenstein. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's where the stories are coming, but they obviously did it in the Doctor Who style. Like Hammer Horror, they do it in the style and be very careful not to get it so close to Universal when they did it. You know, like avoiding the square head with Frankenstein, they had to make uh, Christopher Lee sort of uh, humanoid, you know, with a humanoid face, not a square head. You know, so they had to yeah. avoid all that, otherwise Universal would have gone after him for copyright, you know. <coughs> so that yeah. was always going on. Yeah, but I quite like the yeah, I quite like the uh, decayed master, and it creeped me out. You know, when I first saw him, you know, creeped me out, gave oh, me yeah. nightmares. Uh, yeah. Peter Pratt freaked me yeah. out. You know, when he was all sort of skeletal and this whole yeah. thing. You know, like I, I, yeah. that freaked me out with his face and in oh. the uh, the assassin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it was a I brilliant thought, view. I thought, I thought he delivered those lines perfectly, you know, when he's, he's, oh, yeah. he's holding the doctor. He says, so decisively, so irresistibly, so unbelievably, I can't get rid of yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. That was it. Was he was threatening him. It was like, um, why have you brought me here? As a scapegoat. Yeah. Who else but you? Oh, yeah. Uh, so despicably like good. Said, yeah, go so on. So insufferably compassionate. I wanted yeah. you to I like die in ignominious. I, like I like the bit where he says, uh, predictable as ever, Doctor. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was brilliant. Yeah. I, know. I wanted you to die in ignominious shame and disgrace. I love that bit. That's right, yeah. Uh, he says, <laughs> you would delay, you would delay an execution so you could pull off a dragonfly's oh, wing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Quite... I thought it was a pretty good story. I really did. I think yeah. that's uh, probably one of their best. And it was a good way to bring the master back into it and show what yeah. happened to it after Roger Delgado. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't understand. Can I ask you this? Did you, have you seen the frontier space? You have? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I have, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, towards the end, when the master was there, I didn't quite get what was going on there, where he disappeared to. You know, suddenly uh, he confronted John Perley, and then suddenly John presses the box, the bottom on the box, and it's, yeah. you know, it just didn't make sense. I didn't know what the hell was going on. But it did make sense, because obviously uh, Roger Delgado had been killed a few weeks later. I don't well, know when they made I think what happened was, the plan was they were going to reuse the... Do you remember earlier there was that monster that the Ogons were yeah. scared of? When what, that, doctor, that, uh, that laughable, wobbly thing. That thing, yeah. <laughs> like jelly baby. I think, um, I think the idea was uh, when the Doctor activated the uh, the fear device, that was supposed to scare the Ergons off. And I think it scared well, the master. Of fear, fear into your mind or something on things that frightened you in the past. Yeah, so the thing was supposed, that was supposed to frighten the master off. But like as he was terrified, he fired a shot off. Uh, and uh, that's what kind of wounded the doctor and then he just ran and i suppose what was supposed to happen after that was the earth alliance uh, would kind of um raid the planet and presumably that's I, presumably that's what happened to the master or, or something well, else i don't think i don't because i think roger delgado says uh Harry Lett says how do you want if you want to carry, carry on as the master roger and he says, no. He says, well, would, would you like us to kill you off? He says, oh, yeah. He says, would you like to go out and big bang, Roger? He says, yeah. yeah. Perfect. But yeah. unfortunately, it never got to that stage. And that's why the Master was uh, kept alive as a character. Yeah. The Roger Delgado's demise or whatever, you know? Yeah. Otherwise... Hello? Yeah. Oh, Car Lee, Lee. Lee, you froze for a minute. You oh, no. You've frozen. Oh dear. Uh oh. It's all been good. There we go. Yeah. Keep coming and going. Yeah, it's true. Oh dear. Let's but I mean Well, as you were saying, the um the the guy I wanted to kind of go out in a blaze of glory and um it never yeah. um Oh, oh wait, wait, refreshing. Hopefully, he's uh, going to be back with us. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, Lee, if you can hear us, there might be an idea if you. Oh, are you back? There he is. Okay, okay. Good. you're good. Right, good. Good. I'm here. I'm here. Good. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think there's gremlins in the work. It happened to me when I was doing with Mr. Hyde. I had a lot of problems with yeah. the stream itself. Uh, I went off the air for about half an hour, and the next time he saw me, I was coming up the stairs with my uh, yeah. mobile phone that I had to resort to. You know, so I was oh. breathing heavily, you know, and, and it was live on the uh, show. I didn't even know I was swearing and blinding as I was coming up. There. I didn't know you had to be live on it. <laughs> <laughs> Got caught out on television, as I said. Yeah. Well, didn't, didn't that happen to um, the guy who played Bungle in, in Yeah, it did. And it happened to me. <laughs> oh, I see. So um, we were talking about the Peter Pratt was the next master because El Delgado obviously died to the yeah they, they did they didn't do the final game but they did the Deadly Assassin later and um, that was a good comeback for the master would you say yeah I yeah. would have said so uh, it was a good way to shoehorn him back into the program wasn't it it was yeah I mean because it was great it, it had the elements of how a master would return 
Yeah, definitely. Sort of a uh, subdiffuse, you know. Yeah. Under mm -hmm. the shadow of darkness lurks this evil character. Who could this mask or shadowy figure be? And it's yeah. a mask. I, mean, I think nobody expected it, you know, no. to be the yeah. big mask. I think they had somebody else in mind, but yes. And eventually he disappears. Yeah. Uh, and then he comes back as Jeffrey Beavers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. do you know Jeffrey Beavers is the husband of Caroline John? Yeah, we're uh, sorry, mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All connected. Yeah. There is a lot of connections with Dot Two. Like I said, with Yasmin uh, Delgado and Roger, you know. <clears throat> yeah. They're all in cool, it. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what, what did you make of um, Keeper Truck and, and Legopolis then? Uh, Legop uh, I don't know about Legopolis. Uh, they had that ballet dancer in it, didn't they? Uh, to play that uh, sort of keep or watch or whatever. Yeah. John Fraser, dancer, yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, I don't know. I saw his goal. I thought that Tom Baker looked pissed off. Yeah. He, really he was. He was. <laughs> I don't think he's happy doing that. I think he's even pissed off with that Adric, uh, Matthew Waterhouse. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's uh, on his own with him, you know, because yeah. I don't think it counts off very well, you know. No. Yeah. When they were doing the dialogue. Yeah. And I know that Tom Baker, towards the end, didn't even bother to watch everybody else. Usually another actor would sort of watch how it's going. Tom didn't bother. He just went down the hall. Yeah. yeah. Went I mean, down with the uh, Fleet Street Hackers, by the way. And a drink in a bar in London. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. love the pint in Tom. Yeah. Well, I mean, th th isn't that why he had kind of had to leave? Because the thing is, um, his uh, doctor said, look, you're going to have to um, give up the drinking, otherwise you're gonna, it's going to kill you. Yeah, he did talk about that, Tom, yeah. Well, that was yeah. uh, that, uh, William Hartnell had a problem with drink. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was a, a real bad. He also had a disease as well. Uh, I think it was to do his mind, his uh, brain disease. I don't know what it was. But Arterio, was Arterio sclerosis. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, uh, he was very forgetful on certain yeah. things. You know, he wouldn't yeah. remember or where he was. Or, and that happened on set and Doctor Who a lot, by the way. He didn't yeah. Get to sleep. Yeah. And he, he had a very, good. very short temper, you know. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, for, uh, at first, he didn't get on with uh, the younger girl. Uh, what's the name? Su played Susan. Uh, Caroline Ford. Caroline yeah, Ford. Uh, he had to go at her because she was spending money. You know, yeah. and he says, I wouldn't spend money because you never know when your next job. And she goes, look, I'll spend the money how I want to, Bill. Right. You know? Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, eventually, he came round and became more warmer to her. And he bought oh, yeah. some roses and flowers in her dressing room. She and after yeah. that, it broke the ice and they were all <laughs> like a happy family. Yeah, it always uh, always works a charm, doesn't it? The flowers and the yeah, it does a bit. It depends on who you who you're sending them to or you're throwing them at. Yeah, <laughs> point. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, uh, yeah, uh, William Hartnell, as we know, uh, was getting he was very ill when he mm, talked. Yeah. Yeah. You know that. You know. Yeah. Uh, 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 Patrick Troughton, as far as I'm concerned, was a brilliant actor. I've oh, seen yeah. him so many good stuff. He was fantastic as uh, he, did a few, he did a few Hammer Horrors. I don't know if you saw the Gorgon. He was brilliant in that. And he was also in uh, the Viking Queen or something as well before he got off of the role. And he was in a lot of Danger Man. He was in a lot of yeah. Danger Man. He always played the baddie, though. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. I've seen those in the library, yeah. Uh, anyway. But a lot of them did start off in the 60s. It was up to uh, towards the 70s. A lot of them have had so much experience acting with great actors like Patrick McDuan and people mm. like that. I mean, what about Patrick McGowan for Doctor Who? <laughs> you would have been good. Oh, it would have been fantastic. I mean, a man that created the prisoner. Yeah. And made you man for what it is. He has to yeah. be a genius. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, I mean, what, what, did you, like, um, were you not as keen on the uh, the later um, Tom Baker stuff then? The Baker. Oh, yeah. Tom Baker, for me, was the best Doctor. Let's play it. Yeah. The reason yeah. why he was the best is because he played it as himself. Yeah, yeah, he did. He really cared about the role. He cared oh, about yeah. the character. He cared about the people that watched it. He cared oh. about the people that were around him. And it was a great, tight-knit family. Him and Sarah yeah. with Elizabeth Sladen thrown in. Because, mind you, they're both from Liverpool. 
Do you know what yeah. that? Yeah. So they got yeah. on very well. So that's yeah. make it easier. Uh, well, did you know Tom was actually a monk? Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before, a long time ago, but he was a monk. Uh, and did yeah. his national service, and that's where he learned his craft in the uh, active uh, performances for the soldiers and stuff like that. Most of them yeah. that way. Uh, we know that uh, John Perkins was a real life spy, you know, he's an action hero, a real life in the war. And uh, we know that Patrick Troughton nearly had uh, was nearly killed when one of his boats, I think he was in charge, got blown by the Jack or the Germans or something in World War Two. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it is true. This he he just missed. He, I think he was on leave or something, and about two days later, his boat gets blown up in uh, on you know, in action or something like that, and he wasn't on it, so he was yeah. lucky. Uh, yeah. Colin Baker. This is also another connection. Colin Baker in the war, when he was in his brand, a bomb uh, dropped by the Luftwaffe. Yeah, it thoroughly missed him just by inches. He managed to yeah. survive. It blew up, yeah. but he managed to live. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty that. Yeah. Hmm. So there are so there are some sort of touching stories to go with these actors that play these. There really is. Oh, uh, uh, Matthew, yeah. Matthew Pounder in the chat says uh, McGowan turned down Bond. He was very fussy about his projects. Yeah, he did turn it down Bond. Yes. Yeah, I don't think Patrick McGowan would want Bond anyway. Uh, it, it was against his part. It was against more of a direct. Hello? And a writer, he loved to write, he loved to direct. Oh, That's what he would do oh, because he did so much acting. Major man, he'd done it, he'd done it all. He'd been in Hell Racers. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw that. Oh, uh, Hell Driver, sorry. It had everybody, it had yeah. Sean Connery, it had uh, Stanley Baxter, William Hartnell was in that, along with uh, wow. Herbert Long. They yeah. were all in that, mm -hmm. and uh, Patrick McGowan played that rough Irish guy, you know, that rough Irish uh, driver, you know. And they were all about going that speed to deliver all their, their load and everything. Now, yeah, the road at 90 miles an hour, I think it was. It was like a, it was a, it was a really a real fucking in your face yeah. film. Fantastic. Yeah. You want to see that brilliant film. You'll see all those great actors together. You don't usually yeah. see that. You know, they yeah. go on different things, but they really work well. Fantastic. Yeah. All drives, it was called. Yeah. Tom Connery. Uh, is in it uh, in quite a lot of the uh, parts of it. But Herbert Lom, you know Herbert Lom, he's Drapers, you know uh, yeah. Peter Sellers' boss. Yeah, you remember mm. him, Herbert Lom? No, I don't remember. Sorry. Did, did you ever watch the Pink Panther films? Oh, uh, no, I, I miss me. Well, I, I remember. I only vaguely remember them. But I usually remember the vaguely. Shot in the dark. Have you ever seen the shot in the dark? No, sorry. Oh, fantastic film that! That was a real. That was, I think that was the best of the lot, actually. Uh, oh. Herbert Long was his boss, and he went out of his mind. He ended up trying to kill Cluzo. Oh, <laughs> I see. The boss trying to kill you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you need to check those out, uh, Sadako, at some point. I will. Yeah, I will. No, give it a look. Give it. A look. Anyway, we're talking about Patrick McGrew and you're right. He did turn it down. He didn't want to do it because he had so much going on. He had other projects that he wanted to look at because he, he didn't want to act anymore. He, he really wanted to do directing and writing. That's what he was really moving on. Like all actors want to do other things. They don't want to just stay as an actor. Like Barry Lex, he was an actor and then he moved yeah. on. He took the course and became a director. He wrote the uh, first, I think he directed his first Doctor Who in 1967. It was the one with Patrick Trout and played two people. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, the, the uh, enemy, enemy of the world. And if you look at it, like it well, feels, it's got a bit of a unit feel to it almost. Yeah, that was the one Barry Letts did his first one. And Barry Letts said he hated it. He said it was crap. He says, I could have oh. it a lot better. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, it, it was his first one. He did, yeah. you know, he made a few mistakes about directing how the camera should be and, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, the dialogue wasn't too good either. But there was enough. Good actors there to bring out a powerfulest performance to make it work. So, what did you think of uh, Ainley, and uh, what did you think of Anthony Ainley's performance? Uh, Anthony Ainley, I think he was trying to look more like Roger Delgado, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. He was a good actor because he's got yeah. a brother as an actor, and his dad was an actor, and he's been in a lot of things. Anthony, he was not just not known for that. You know, he's, he's done a lot of stuff before that. Uh, so he has had a good career before Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. 
But unfortunately, JNT wanted him to play him uh, to sort of bring back the nostalgia bit. He was always yeah. into that uh, JNT by yeah. sort of trying to nostalgic nostalgialize everything. You know, yeah. so it keeps the fans you know, in the past back on board. So you know, this is what John JNT would do. You know, like he'd get an actress, like an Australian actress. So yeah. he could uh, get a lot more Australian fans when they're broadcasting over there. So Janet yeah. Leamy, Elif Janet Fielding is deliberately cast as Tegan yeah. under the Australian uh, possibility. And of course, the practical opinion was not a bloody American. No. <laughs> she got on that phony yeah. American accent because they, were, uh, uh, because they were about to bring in Ameri American audiences broadcast to America, got to in yeah. the early 80s. Yeah. And, um, I mean, would you? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm very down on that period, and I feel like, in a way, I feel like the master, like up until, like if the deadly assassin was the last we saw the master, mm -hmm. that would be legendary. And I feel like all they did by bringing him back was kind of turn the master into a bit of a has been, and turn the show yeah. into a bit of a has been. Well, it gave him uh, basically nothing more to do. You knew what his purpose was. It's sort of just like Christopher Lee in it as Dracula. They kept on reeling him in. You know, yeah. what's the point? I know they do the story. The story was meant to revolve around Christopher Lee all the time, and it just didn't work. You know, the no. plot and the dialogue softened. And the same with the master, it yeah. revolved around just reel him in, you just reel yeah. him in, right? Yeah. Just reel him in, but it, but it calls for the dialogue, you know. Yeah. So I don't well, think it worked. And I no. think Anthony Hayley could have been used a lot better. To be oh, yeah. That. A lot yeah. better. But you could say that about a lot of actors, yeah, in the program. Oh, yeah. A yeah. lot of that were misused or underused. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought the the, work, the best actress they had playing it in Doctor Who was uh, Ingrid Pitt. Ingrid Pitt. Oh, yeah. I know you dug it. Remember, right. she was in uh, The Time Monster. Yeah. Yes. Which, she mm. was lovely, <laughs> wasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, bloody hell, fire. That was uh, <laughs> And I saw an Eagle Stare with Richard Burton. Brilliant film. Anyway. Uh, and she was also in uh, with Peter Davidson in Warriors of the Deep. Yeah. Ah, and there's an early yeah, from the that bit where the Melka comes around yeah. the corner and she says she's doing all this. Ah, oh, what? Oh, oh. what the bloody hell's that? I mean, yeah. you're, the bloody thing, you're dead. Mm. Um, yeah. Right, kick it. Not one of Peter's the best stories, no. Yeah, I, I said the case of Andrasani was probably Peter Davidson's only story that I remember that was probably good. Yeah. I can't remember it. Even Cyberman, Earthshot, wasn't it was all right. It built yeah. up. I can't believe they built Cyberman up because you didn't know it was a Cyberman. And that's why it was such a good story. It's when you know what's gonna happen is when it's sort of uh, lost its reason. Yeah. Like it's... I say, if you don't engage with the audience, you lose the audience. You oh, know, yeah. you should never tell the audience how to think. No. no. Never. Because never. the audience are not stupid. No. And I feel that's I I feel like a lot of that did happen in Davidson's era. I think um Oh yeah. Like um especially like well, I mean Well yeah, I mean Warriors of the Deep was the classic example of uh, just telling the audience what to think rather than showing them. Well, they had a lot of problems with that, Warriors of the Day, because of the yeah. budget and the time. Yeah. Remember, they had the general election, yeah? Margaret Thatcher. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And they couldn't make it. And there's also body strikes going on with the unions. Yeah. So they had a certain time. Remember, in the old days, they had to finish by 10 o'clock. Yeah. So mm. if they didn't get it done, it was the fights off. Uh -huh. And also, there was trouble with uh, some of the uh, technicians there. You know, like, we're not allowed to touch a certain prop. Oh, all right. If you touched it, it will cause industrial action because it was meant to be by that department. Or if you're taking mm. this job, that's what they oh. saw. And there was a lot of trouble with that, and that's what caused a lot of strikes. That's why Doctor Who was taken off the air, and they had them back out in industrial action with the bleeding prop boys or whatever. That was it's utter ridiculous. Not yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Lee, uh, do you think that's why Thatcher kept winning? <laughs> <laughs> she kept winning because you saw the pillock she was up against. Oh, right. <laughs> the Neil Kinnock, Tom Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen him. He's back in the middle, you believe. I could put the opposition leader went to a funeral in a bloody <laughs> jacket. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Are you going to yeah. vote for him? No. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Jeremy Corbyn holds the dinner, innit? I know. Yeah. I could have. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on the master? Because you've had mine. Well, like I said, I feel like he was great in the seventies. I think he was a great yeah. villain for that time, and I feel like he should. Like, I feel like he was he was ruined by overuse by being kind of pushed constantly in the eighties and. Yeah, he wasn't alive in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, they overused yeah. him in the eighties. What was your best story, of the master? The best one: well, John Pertwee, Tom Baker, Peter Ooh. David. Which one would you pick out of all of them? Out of every one of them, which okay. one would you? Pick? Um, I would say for me, it would be Terror of the Autons. I quite Terror enjoyed Autons. Mind, of, Mind of Evil. I like the Mind of Evil. See that? That was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. Was that introduced a uh, unit? Uh, in yeah. a proper, proper sort of format, yeah. So what you, can do, you know, when a yeah. storm in a Stanway prison, was it Stalmail prison or something? Yeah, yeah, and then I would say, uh, Deadly Assassin, obviously. Yeah, mm. and I, I enjoyed the demons for what it was. Yeah, well, the King's Demons, yeah, no, 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 the demons, the oh, the, the uh, demons, the, the demons. Right. The Food with the wording, you know, because he's uh, very let's deliberately swap the E and A round. Yeah. So, like <laughs> <laughs> so, it doesn't, so it's Damon's. Damon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that. And then I enjoyed um, probably his final, the final story, the classic era with the master was, I enjoyed survival. Yeah. The survival yeah. one. Yeah. I felt, uh, I felt a bit disappointed because they had the next season ready to go as well. You know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Andrew Cartmel was ready to take over fully. Yeah. I think we were going to give JNT the Evo, and Andrew Cartmel was going to be Joel on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, uh, what about you, Sadako? What is your favorite master story? Um, the Demons would be one of them. Uh, Mind of Evil. Nice. Um, and the Deadly Assassin would be up there as well. Um, oh, yeah. And although I'm not so keen on the 80s stuff, I quite liked uh, the Five Doctors. I really like the yeah, Five Doctors. Yeah, that too. Yeah, Five Doctors. Mm -hmm. Right. Mine, uh, my top three would be, obviously, the Terror of the Autons. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that introduced the Master. Yes. To, yeah. To right. Uh, the second one, I would say the one where he had a lot of banter with uh, John Pertwee. Oh, that could be any of them. <laughs> they off each other. I like the way they bounce off each other, you know, with the dialogue. And that would have been in the Sea Devils. And the, well, uh, next one, and the next one, the final one, I'd say would have been Frontier in Space. It could have been a classic, that one. Yeah. For what happened. So, mm. uh, but they are were, they were my three. Nice. Yeah. Good selection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I like to think so. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to go into um, Eric Roberts, do we? That performance. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, Can I ask you about that? What do you think of Eric Roberts? I mean, I, I think I was to take him. I thought, is it, I think, was this made for an American audience or actually the actual Whovian audience? I think uh, it was, uh, uh, was it CB Fox or something? C yeah, Fox. Yeah, Fox News or whatever was sort of backing it, wasn't it? And it was done yeah. by an American guy. No offence to any Americans, but I don't think this guy knew what he was doing when he made it. Uh, yeah. I think he just made it for the sake of it so he could get, uh, uh, so he could put his stamp on it and create it in an American sort of way for Doctor Who. So he right. could sell it to the networks, you know? Mm. It yeah. Work. It didn't work. No, yeah. it didn't. Well, I mean, Especially when it said the doctors are human. Where's that come from? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was, yeah. It was a bit of a Spock thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Spock from Star Trek. Half <laughs> but thing is, I do get the sense, was Eric Sowood, uh, sorry, was Eric Roberts a fan? Because I feel like he kind of was a fan of the show. Uh, I'm not too sure on that. I don't think he was a fan. I think he did his research. Okay. Yeah. I would have thought he did his research, but I don't think he uh, really sort of uh, followed it like some real people that are obsessive about the program. I think he took it on as a job. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, at the time, I think his career was fagging, wasn't it? So this sort of put him back into the spotlight because his sister was getting all the. Uh, oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I got uh, sort of into it in the first place. And I don't, uh, and I thought Paul McGann yeah. was not used a lot. No, you weren't. I don't think I saw the best of Paul McGann in this. I no, thought I saw the best of Paul McGann in The Night of the Doctor. Stephen yeah. Moffat did that sort of. But I felt he needed a bit more. Yeah, I guess it. I always said, like, the problem I had with uh, McGann in the movie is we never saw him get to take a stand. No. Like, he, was just... and, he, um... couldn't... he only was in it for 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... God, father. I mean, if he was only in it for 20 minutes, what could he have done if he was in it for 45 minutes? Yeah. That's Thinking true. Thinking about that, how he would have really uh, projected himself, bringing yeah. the character you did see much of him, you know. It's all about Eric Roberts as the master, and oh, you know, yeah. you, know, you know, with uh, Sylvester thrown in, and uh, and I, yeah. I did a bit with the, uh, the, uh, the criminals, you know, the Chinese guy and his mates. Yeah, and, yeah. And then the doctor comes out, and he'll shoot. Yeah. What's all that about? <laughs> I just didn't understand it. I just Very thought like, this is the way the goes. Go, oh, it? They like that sort of thing: blow up, explosions, yeah. Murders, yeah. Yeah. Well, like for Doctor Who. I would have thought, no. thought about it and had him uh, on some, I don't know, uh, on another planet. I don't know. I, I just, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not, it wasn't in the mindset of writing it. But if I give it some good thought, I would probably think about it a little bit more clearer. I mean, would you uh, do it in England? It would be a lot better because it's more relatable to the fans, isn't it, than America. But I think it's because it had to be in America, it's because it was to the American audience. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just feel like it is one of those stories I don't return to often because there's just not much to intrigue. There's no yeah. intrigue to it. No, it's just, and I feel well, like, yeah, no, you're right. There isn't much going on there. Uh, there is uh, the bike, the bike chase scene, and the uh, hospital uh, with the master in the ambulance and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but then there was yeah. a lot of position after that, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Too much yeah. of it, you know when. It, the master had him put the doctor at a disadvantage in his TARDIS, the eye of harmony opening up, and all that. Yeah, uh, you know, that, there was a lot of position going on. So that killed uh, that sort of played for time in my book. Well, it, it kind of in that, that ending still never made sense to me. Still, don't. oh, I know where you did the reset button. Yeah, I felt that if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, why didn't the uh, uh Grace join him? Hmm. Yeah, you know, that would have been an interesting sort of uh, carry on to it. Yeah, but, you know, because there would have been something there, right? For the fan, you know, yeah. uh, assistant joining the doctor because the doctor would never travel alone, it no. wouldn't work. No, Tom Baker when I suggested it, Philip Hinchcliffe, right? When Elizabeth Slade and left, he said, uh, Can I do this on my own? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, he wanted to do it his own, said, No, stop, you can't do that. He says, we, yeah. you know, he says, I'm all right. I can do it myself. I can do everything myself, he says. Yeah. <laughs> but they wouldn't let him do it. <laughs> and did oh, you yeah. know, this is something else you need to know. Did you know that Tom Baker actually stayed on as long as he did because he thought he was going to uh, have a deal with another company to make Doctor Who with him in it? You know, like a film. Oh. Oh, the, yeah, um, this. the Scratchman thing. Yeah, he wanted to do a film. He wanted to sort of uh, ex extension by on the actual character. And he felt yeah. that Doctor Who could move on from the television series and become yeah. more uh, to the international stage. And he wanted to create that project. But the BBC said no. Same so did. Baker, from that point on, caused a lot of problems for the BBC. And I like yeah. him moving with them, having a go at the directors. Uh, one director... Uh, and him didn't get on completely. Hands down, and Bromley, right? And yeah. uh, both went up to, you know, Bruce one They both yeah. went up there. Tom Baker says, "I guarantee you, I'll be coming out first. And back <laughs> back. You know, you're, you're going that way to the exit." Yeah, <laughs> that was on uh, Night Movie. That, that was Night Movie, wasn't it? Night Movie, Eden. That one, wasn't it? Yeah, he had a, a big, massive row with the director because the director says. This is how I want you to do, Tom. He says, what are you telling me? I know the Doctor. I'm the Doctor. I know what to do. I know what to do. This is what I do. All the fans know who I am. What are you telling me to pick this plate up here, put it down there, and then put that there, and then move my hands here? Don't be silly. You're being utterly ridiculous. And that's yeah. what went on all the time. And sometimes, uh, in some of these interviews, he used to get niggly 
with the interviews because he used to ask him daft questions, so he'd give him a daft yeah. response. Like the yeah. one, if you ever saw the one with Mary Tan, it's, uh, Frank Boff is on the other side of the sofa, and yeah. uh, uh, he says, who are you today, Tom Baker or Doctor Who? He says, who do you think I am? I'm Tom yeah. Baker. What the hell do you think I'm here for? I'm an interview. You, or do you want me to be interviewed as a doctor, or do you yeah. want me as Tom Baker? <laughs> Yeah. Who are you? Are you Frank Boff or are you somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> so it got a little bit uh, rough and tough there. Like that, he didn't like that, he, you know, because he got pissed off with the interviews because he's asking tough questions. Questions yeah. you were asking, you know, they're superfluous, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I hated that, you know, that sort of uh, studio <laughs> crap. I just don't yeah. think he likes it. I think he hated that sort of publicity, you know. Yeah. But he, Say that what do you want? Do you want to be, do you want to die and be poor? Do you want to be rich and be famous? Well, obviously, you want to be rich and be famous and be alive to, to enjoy it. Yeah. You know? so, uh, so there was a true truth to that because he used to work on a building site, by the way. I know, yeah. 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 <laughs> and he had to keep stub for two weeks while he did all the publicity. So all his mates didn't know he was Doctor Who. They yeah. just thought he was coming back to make the teas for him and go up with a hog carrier. You know, yeah, you know, sort of thing. Uh, and then he went to this fortune teller before because he had not got any work. He's not got any work, and he went right. to his fortune teller to see if his fortune. She told him he, he gave her the money, and then she looked at him, and then she gave it back, and she cried, and she said, oh. two, uh, two weeks later, he got the job as doctor." In other words, she, she was a charlatan. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she, she called her a charlatan because he said he All wasn't right. going to act. Yeah. Says, oh, um, oh. <laughs> oh uh, did, yeah, uh, um, uh, Dave's got a phone call, so um, it's just the two of us now. Oh, um, Matthew oh, Pounder God. says, Matthew Pounder says, Roberts was too camp, played him as Liberace. Liberace. Yeah, Eric, Eric Roberts, yeah. Eric Roberts, yeah. Yeah, I felt that he was overdone in the makeup department. They made him too slimy in all sense of the word, didn't they? They made him too, they made him too Danny LaRue, didn't they? <laughs> Possibly, yeah. But I just, I think that the problem for me was that I think he was almost too detestable as the master. I feel uh, like, I think, um, yeah. oh, sorry, because like, like Delgado, he was he was the villain, but like he kind of part of you liked him, you part of you a little bit rooted for him. But it was, yeah, um, he, had quality, didn't he? he had that quality where when he says something, it's believable. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You believe what he's saying to you. You believe yeah. the way he's projecting it. He's actually yeah. someone you could be convinced by. He could yeah. sell you, you know? He could sell yeah. you London Bridge. He was yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> and it was all done. You remember actors, right? Actors, it's all done with the eyes. You know, mm. Michael Caine, Michael Caine, right? His trick yeah. was to pick an eye, you know, from another actor when he's doing his dialogue. It always looked either in the left or the right eye. If you yeah. ever watch his uh, presence, he's always picking one eye or the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. That's how he, he's, he's been successful doing that. He did it in one of his, he told us uh, he, he did it in one of these, uh, you know, these acting cinemas. He, he usually come on the uh, live streams or whatever. And he, yeah. and he gave a few tricks away about how it worked, how he was yeah. successful, how it worked for him, you know. Yeah. So I was thinking, guys, do we want to do a part? Oh, hello, Dave. Yeah. You're back. Yeah, I'm back. So I was thinking, do we want to do a part two of this? The only thing is I got to go in like 20 minutes because I'm working with my job coach who works with uh, people with disabilities. I'm part of that program. So oh, yeah, yeah. No problem, mate. This is fantastic. I wouldn't mind doing another one of these. Yeah, oh, maybe. Yeah. Should we do a part two or something? We'll make this part one. Yeah, and... I'll well, tell you what. Do a part please. two and I'll get it promoted properly. Well, the thing is, everybody like... know on Twitter, <laughs> Facebook, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Mel. Yeah, appreciate it. I'll get yeah. everyone coming in. I'll make them feel guilty not for coming. <laughs> right. You're awesome. Thank you. You're awesome. Okay, so, so we, what's it going to be, the second part? Is it uh, more of an extension on the first? Yeah, I suppose we could do it that way, yeah. And then do we want to just do the watch along another day, uh, Sadako? What do you think? What I was going to say was, look, what I was doing with Mr. Hyde, and I've got, I'm doing about five parts here. I'm on the third uh, series of this uh, episode of the horror stream. We did a hammer. The Universal, uh, and now we're going to go into modern day horror. But what I could do with the, what you could do with the uh, master is talk about uh, the actors that played him because there's enough actors there to get yeah. through all. Yeah, we well, start yeah. off with the first one, Roger Delgado, which you've done today, and then we can yeah. move on to uh, the next one. 
And the next one, Peter Pratt, Jeffrey Beavers, Anthony Ainley. Uh, you could even go with as far as the Missy if you want. Okay. Well, um, we've not got to the new series yet. We could we've, no. done up to, we've done up to where uh, the TV movie, haven't we? So we could probably just do we could next uh, part two could just be on the new series masters, I suppose. Yes, yeah, probably. Uh, I always see Doctor Who now as a as a new adventures. It's nothing to do with the classics. The classics are certainly no. detached from the new. Yeah, I agree. A, yeah. You, can't, you can't compare the actors of today to the actors of yesterday. It just can't be done. Yeah. Different period, different time. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Like Tom Baker, would he have worked well in this era? That's a good point. Mm. Would Christopher Eccleston worked well in the Tom Baker era? Mm. Mm. That's a good question. You know, yeah. they're the sort of things that I ask myself. No, they wouldn't because they were different times in different places. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to accept the fact that you cannot compare the classics because they were done in done for that time, that moment. Not in that yeah. moment anymore, in this moment. Yeah. And everything that's been done now or is going to be done is not yeah. has got no sort of uh, connection with what happened. That has no. happened. This is happening now. Yeah. In other words, what I'm saying is you can't put the pen in tomorrow's space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Think about it. So, uh, should we uh, call, do a wrap here then? And um, yeah. uh, plug yourself if you want. I'll tell you what. Um, okay, uh, Dave, can you uh, end the live broadcast then? Um, thanks, guys. Uh, for yeah, thanks so on. much, Lee. Thanks so much, Sadaka. You guys are awesome. You guys yeah. are awesome. And thanks so much to the guys in the chat, Matthew, Disaster, Charlotte, who was on the chat earlier. Yeah, thank you very much. You're right there. I appreciate every one of you coming on to, to David's channel, and I recommend you visit his YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Okay, everybody? You're awesome. So I got to – okay, right. All right, um, thanks so much, guys. Take care. Peace. Bye for now. Peace. 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 Right. <laughs> awesome.